fuel leak, and I, I think, uh, well, well, it grounded the privately funded Polaris Dawn space mission until Wednesday morning at the earliest. Uh, the mission is uh, on board a SpaceX capsule, and it would send billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman and three other private citizens into space who aim to conduct the first spacewalk ever carried out by a civilian crew. For more on this, uh, let's bring in Mike Massimino, former NASA astronaut, uh, now a Columbia University uh, engineering professor. He's author of the book Moonshot, a NASA astronaut's guide to achieving the impossible. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, Joe. Thanks for having me. It's a day go by where you, you don't say how amazing it is that this has really quickly moved into the private sector? I, I, I think about it pretty much all the time. Uh, yeah, about every day something else is, is happening. It is amazing, actually. When you read about what they're going to be doing, uh, it, is, it is amazing. They're doing things that the government hasn't done for a long time, putting astronauts in a very high altitude. They're going to conduct a spacewalk, the first privately conducted spacewalk. So it's a five-day mission jam-packed with a lot of exciting things. Is the, the risk been minimized since some of the most scarring events in, in anyone who's lived a, a certain amount of time? We remember that where we were, what yeah. we were doing for a couple of those incidents. And I, for some reason, I can't get beyond just worrying and having some anxiety when there's yeah. going to be a, a crew on board. Especially, I mean, Elon Musk is amazing. SpaceX mm -hmm. is amazing. But doesn't this raise the stakes when, when there's... Uh, you know, a, a crew? Or, or are they so good at this already? They do a lot of these launches. Have they got it down? Well, I, they've gotten pretty good at it, right? And it's been a while. The last major accident we've had was the Columbia accident back in uh, 2003. So it's been a while since we've had a major accident. We've had some close calls. We've had some things happen on, uh, on, on, on space flights. But we've been able to recover from them, and no one's been hurt. Is it more, a simpler step? Because remember, it, there was weird Morton Thiokol O-rings on, on, on one, and then there were some tiles challenge. that came off on. on yeah, a chal on Challenger the, was the. These are shuttle accidents you're talking about. So I the am. First one, the first one was an O-ring problem o -ring, back in 1986. I don't mean to, to pick on the shuttle. Right? Yeah, no, I'm no. just talking about how complex that. No, right. no, I remember and, and right. where to, I was. To answer that. your question, yeah. I agree with you. It's a dangerous business. We've learned a lot. I mean, the shuttle was a dangerous vehicle. Uh, speaking, you know, that's a, I had two space flights on the shuttle. Looking back on it, it was a higher risk than I think NASA wanted at that time. Uh, now the spaceships are much safer the way they're constructed. They, are, yeah. they don't land. You know, this one does not land on a runway. It has its thermal protection system uh, covered during launch. There's abort systems that can keep you safer. There's a lot of automation that keeps you well, that's safer. That's why I was asking. So I think we're definitely, absolutely, 100 percent, we are safer than we used to be at this. But it's still space travel, and there's always that what risk. Did, I just read that a fuel leak has postponed it a day. A uh, helium leak, he, a little he, bit he, different. Oh, oh, helium, oh, oh yeah. it was a helium leak yeah. in, in the one up at the, uh, at the ISS, Yeah, a little too, bit different. Right? That, was, that was a helium leak in space, which was worse than having one on the ground. And this was ground equipment, apparently the umbilical that provides the helium on the ground. So it might be a simple change out because it's a ground device that's having See, a problem. See, this is why you're here. So there you, you can, go. You can uh, tell us exactly... What's going to happen to the astronauts who are kind of abandoned up there? Were you shocked by the decision to not go with the Boeing flight home? Are you somebody who's... No, I think it was the right, the right call. I wouldn't say abandoned either because we're all thinking about them. And no, oh they're, they're in good shape. They, uh, but they thought they, they were, were going delayed. for a few days. They now thought they were going to be up there for eight days. And then yeah. it, it moved to a few weeks. And then, you know, it kind of, they were sort of this, uh, keep moving the date until they could figure it out. And now they know. They know what the plan is. So I'm not surprised that they decided to do this because they didn't feel comfortable with the failures they had. You mentioned the helium leak. There were some thruster issues. You have to be able to steer the spaceship. Gosh. So they had those failures, and they, they did a lot of testing on the ground, but they did not have enough time. They have to bring that spaceship back. So they didn't have enough time to, to figure it all out, and so they changed the plan, and they'll be up there coming back on a different spacecraft in February. What should that tell us about the Boeing proposition here? As a business channel, we look pretty close. Well, I, I, don't think the, I don't think it's over yet. Uh, NASA and Boeing, and on the space sector now, NASA and Boeing have a very good partnership for years. They've been the prime contractor on the space station for over 20 years. A lot of dedicated people there and a good relationship. So I think it's not, it's not over yet. I, I think that that spacecraft will fly again. It's going to come back empty. There's not going to be anybody on board. I think they're going to continue to do the testing on the ground and try to correlate with what they saw in space, make some changes, and try to fly it again. I think they're too far along. 
both uh, the investment by the government, but also the investment by Boeing. I think a lot of their own money is inside of this thing. I don't, I don't, I'd be shocked if they abandon ship here. I think they're going to fly it again. So you go up. Mm -hmm. You're uh, going up for eight days. Then they tell you it's eight months. Yeah. How, yeah. What, what, how are you feeling? What's your, uh, it's like, I, th I think I, could, I guess I, do you have any choice? I guess I could yeah. come, I could come to grips. That I'm just Maybe gonna, it's better once you know. I'm going to hang out. I hope. Yeah. yeah. Do you have Wi-Fi? I mean. Oh yeah, you got all. You can make phone calls. You have an internet protocol phone to call call your family and your friends. Once you, you get have, past the mm -hmm. small amount of space that you have, then you just know you you better stay inside and just wait till your time yeah, it's, comes. It's to not go. as small as you might think, Joe. It's yeah. the volume side of the, so it's not the that spaceship bad. that takes you to orbit and brings you back is small, but you're only in there for a few hours typically. Once you get to the space station, it's large. It's about the volume of a 747, which is quite oh, large for a spaceship. So, and you can That's float, so you can use all of the volume. We, the Wall so Street Journal said it's about the size of three boxcars, the livable space. Three boxcars doesn't sound very big. They may, I don't know if they were talking. They might have been talking about the spacecraft that brings you there. The, well, the size nice. of the space yeah. station. Is it? The, yeah. The size okay, of the space better, station, right? all the modules inside yeah. of the space station is about the, the inside volume of a, of a 747. Like yesterday. So we were, for like 13 people to be living in. Right now they have nine. Typically yeah. you have seven when you have exchanges of crew, either four or three coming up, depending on the spaceship. You have a little more for a few days. But yesterday, but, uh, they, they, yep. they, they insisted that, or they said, at this point, nobody's been put on calorie restrictions, no. and it looks like we have plenty of food. So I was yeah, like, they're, they're not going to miss any meals up there. They have about a four uh, Really? Four they months. got plenty of food? Oh, yeah. They got about four months of reserve food and water, which is the main things you're worried about. And they have extra clothing and other supplies. I wouldn't care. But they also have clothing. supply ships. What's that? You would get. You can, yeah, I wear the same thing, but oh. yeah, I need. I, I need. Yeah. <laughs> the same. I, I do. I do. I do you here. Have to change. You I do, do here. I do on set. Um, I, would, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> but so, they, but they they do have supply ships too that bring up deliveries. So they just had one a few weeks ago, and they got another one coming up in September. So they get resupplied quite often.